it again, friends. I packaged up the item before I could show it to you. I'll put the listing on the screen. I had this for two million years. No joke, this is from my Revolve palette from 2019. I am filming this April of 2024, so some things sell fast, but I keep it real here. Some things take almost five years to sell. This was a really cute bodysuit. I thought about keeping it, but I don't need bodysuits. I don't really like bodysuits that much. Um, so I'm glad it sold and I made a profit, but my oh my. I've always told you guys, if you haven't seen the Revolve videos, I will link them down below. I literally unboxed the entire palette on this channel. Um, the prices of Revolve palettes have gone through the roof. I paid like 46, 4,700 for mine. I now see them selling for like, it's standard for them to sell for over 10 grand. It's crazy. And I've even told you guys for years, my oldies, but my goldies that have been here a while, I've told you like, I don't even know that I would buy that again at $4,700. So it took me years just to make my money back and start making a profit. So just be careful with buying palettes, especially if you're a newer reseller watching this. You might see us buying palettes. You might think like, oh my gosh, they're making so much money, but everything that glitters is not gold, okay? Uh, it's a very risky business. I didn't buy my first palette until I had been reselling for almost six or seven years, you guys. Before that, I was 100% thrifted. Um, well, I got into reselling, buying bulk, but if you know that story, you know, we could do another update on that, but 99% of my reselling career, the first six years was thrifted inventory. So just a cautionary tale. Don't think all liquidation, you make a million dollars, you guys, because I'm still, and I still have about 60 pieces from that palette. No, that's not true. If I actually do the math, I'll put it on the screen or I'll, I, I'll, I think it's like 42 pieces and it was like a 360 item palette five years later. I will say had live selling been a thing back then, this entire palette would have been gone. People eat up revolve stuff on live sales, but it sometimes doesn't sell for as much as if you listed it. So a lot of lessons in this little story, but hopefully you found something in there helpful. This actually sold, uh, I picked this up with you guys. If you've been around since last year, I went thrifting when we were visiting family in Seattle. And I mentioned that some of the Target collabs with designers can do really well. This is a sold out one from the Target and Sony collab. Um, it retailed for 55. You know, I don't know what it sold for. I'll put it on the screen, but I know I made a great profit. So, <coughs> excuse me, they're not all equal, you guys. When you find a Target collab with a designer, especially a higher end designer like Missoni, um, the one they did with Christopher Rogers, I did a video on. Um, it's a that is a designer. Is it Christopher Rogers? He's a designer, black owned brand. I love his stuff. That was very lucrative for me. So not all of them are made equal. Right now they have one with DVF that I'll look into. So sometimes when this stuff sells out, you can make a profit selling it if you can find it. I actually the ones that I just mentioned, the Christopher, I can't remember his full name. I love his stuff though. I actually bought a purse from him and it was a small fortune. Pre owned pre-owned friends um I was buying his stuff actually from Target and selling it while it was still out in the stores because it was selling out so fast in stores that people couldn't find it but we had a ton of it in LA so I bought like 50 of the dresses and I made so much money that was the first time I've ever done that usually I'll just find them at the thrift store but um just something to keep in mind with uh, because Target's been doing a lot of designer collabs and some of them can be profitable. You guys remember the um, Goodwill mystery bag that I paid $20 for for all these jeans? I listed the Gap ones. Um, I unboxed these. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. Size 18. This sold in less than a week, you guys. I just listed these. I just filmed that unboxing for you. And I even notated there's a small hole by the pocket but I checked the sell through rate and I knew that these sold well and I put that in the, the listing and I took a clear photo. So I'll let you know if there's any issues. Um, not a huge profit sale, but I've already made a profit on that bag. It was $20. These sold, I can't remember, I'll put it on the screen. You know how I do. I never remember the price, but I will put it on the screen, I promise. And I'm making net um, $9. And each jean ended up, what was it? It was like $1.25, so eight bucks in a week. I'll take it. I love those bags, you guys. On all of those jean bags, I've already made over $100 profit. I love those bags. I can't wait to go back to the bins. 
I'm actually, I'm like, should I stop mentioning it so much? Because a lot of you live in Los Angeles. And I'm like, I don't want them to sell out. Um, a lot of you from around the country, though, have told me that your Goodwills don't do that. My traditional Goodwill stores don't have them that I've seen. It's only my Goodwill outlet, and they literally sell out within two hours. They put it, like, right at the front of the store. They're pre-made bags that they have a guy make, and he stuffs it with jeans, and it's 20 bucks. I've never seen it anywhere else other than my Goodwill outlet, and I love it. And I will continue to buy them. I don't know if I'm going to keep unboxing them for you guys. Let me know if you want me to in the comments down below, but I'm going to keep buying them for sure. This skin dress sold in less than 48 hours. It sold in like 30 hours. This is a size extra, extra small. This sold for $65. I got this in my Skims palette. I love it. I love selling Skims, you guys. It's just very popular. Um, and especially this stuff that is... Skims comes out with new collections every five minutes. So... Uh, a lot of times they'll discontinue colors and like this dress, this maxi dress in this color, they don't make it anymore. I haven't been able to find it online. So that's great as a reseller because then people will go to the secondhand market to find what they're looking for. And this is the small this is the smallest size they make, extra extra small. So very happy, great profit with that. Okay, friends, new day. These videos are becoming a hodgepodge of days. I'm trying to move the mic off the screen. I thought we would continue the conversation I was having at my storage unit about uh, palettes because I actually got some DMs on Instagram about where I source my palettes. Where do you buy your liquidation? Where do you get your skims? Where do you buy your... You guys, um... I think it's really important to have an honest chat about liquidation. So I told you I've been reselling for what feels like an eternity, more than 10 years. I didn't start buying palettes until year six or seven. I think it was closer to year seven. Before that, everything was thrifted, you guys. I went to thrift stores. And I always recommend, especially if you're new, I feel like seasoned resellers, you guys already know, but if you're new, you guys just start selling the stuff around your house. Don't even go to the thrift store. See if you like photographing and listing and listing on eBay and listing on Poshmark or wherever you list. See if you even like the process of doing it and doing it consistently. I can tell you that reselling is the type of machine that you get what you put in, you get out. So if you're consistent and you're listing, that's how you're gonna make the most money doing it. Even if you just wanna make a little side hustle money, you still have to be consistent. And then, you know, if you're new, you may not even like listing because I had someone DM me on Instagram, brand new reseller, just started in 2024, and she started by buying an $8,000 Revolve palette with 480 pieces in it. Can you imagine if you were just new, go back to whenever you were new, maybe that six months ago, 10 years ago, like myself, can you imagine getting 480 pieces that you have to list, photograph, get up, and try to make $8,000 back? We'll touch on the price in a second. So that's why I always say if you are new, please don't start with liquidation. Please, please, please. Because what happened is she told me, she was like, I was quickly found out I hate listing. I hate listing. So she was like, do you want to buy all my stuff? I'll literally sell it to you at a loss. I don't want to deal with it. And I'm thinking, oh no. And she told me, she's like, I watch your videos. You should really do a video like where you specifically talk about liquidation because You've say, she was like, you've said, you, I remember you saying this years ago, like, don't start with liquidation, but I just saw people live selling and making so much money and they were moving so much product. And that's another thing. She said she didn't like listing. She tried live selling. I think she did like five or 10 live sales, couldn't stand it. And now she's stuck with all this inventory. Number one, you guys, the prices of pallets have gone up astronomically in the last couple of years. I bought my first one in 2019. If you want to see the unboxing, like I said earlier, I'll link those videos down below. It was $4,700. Those pallets have doubled, if not tripled, in price. Um, it's crazy, you guys. They have skyrocketed. And the thing is, the quality is not that great like it used to be. So my first pallet was pre-COVID. Let me close the, the window. My first palette was pre-COVID, you guys. Then, during COVID, palettes were amazing. Liquidation was awesome because people couldn't go into the stores, so stores were liquidating things in bulk. But now, you know, that things have been open for a couple of years, like, it's not that great, and the prices have skyrocketed. And I have tried almost every liquidation 
that you can find on Google that we all know about. I'm not giving them free promo. I don't need to say their names. If you're a reseller and you're watching this video, any company that you see on Instagram that markets to us that you find on Google, I've probably tr tried like the top 20, literally all of them. Some of them are better than others. I've actually gone and visited some of their warehouses in person, actually a couple of their warehouses in person. Um, some have better customer service than others. What I would say, if you're just starting out, or even if you're new, uh, if you're a seasoned reseller but you're newer to liquidation and you really wanna try your hand in it, don't buy a whole pallet, you guys. A lot of these companies offer smaller boxes or they'll allow you to order maybe 50 items or 40 items. All you have to do is chat. You don't even have to call people. You can just chat on the website. You can easily find these people's emails and just say, hey, I would like to start with maybe like ordering 30 pieces of inventory from you. What do you have? Something like that. Start that way. Okay, see how the quality is, see if it is inundated in the market. That's another big thing with liquidation, you guys. Especially when you guys are ordering these pallets from the companies, again, that will remain nameless because I'm not doing free promo, but those companies that we see on Instagram that email us, that a lot of the live sellers sell, a lot of sellers are getting the same thing literally the same thing so if you got this pink shirt and you got 50 of them joe schmo in wisconsin also got the same pink outfit and got 50 of them and then if you got this dress this floral dress and you got 10 of them um ashley in new jersey also got 10 of them so then you're all listing it on ebay you're all listing it on poshmark and it's kind of like a race to the bottom um, so that's also something you need to keep in mind. Maybe start small with these companies, order maybe 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 items. Some of them do have a requirement that you have to start with like a minimum of 100. Not a lot, but if they do, start there. Start there as opposed to doing 500 pieces, you guys. And another thing, a lot of you don't need that much inventory at once. Um, unless you, like I said, you're doing live selling, that's when you need inventory kind of like this, like in bulk, like hundreds of pieces every week, like what I'm getting from my wholesalers, which is thrifted wholesale. It's not, most of it's like 90% of it is not new with tags um, because I do two to three live sales a week. But I know like 90% of you have no care to ever be a live seller and you probably don't need that much bulk inventory. So that's why I always say start small, you guys. And the prices, as someone who has been a pallet slash liquidation connoisseur for the last five years, the prices have like not even doubled, they've tripled, you guys. And a lot of these pallets, they're just not worth it. And a lot of these pallets and liquidation companies that you see that are very well known, that everyone talks about, that I've even talked about in the past, if you go and look at my channel, a lot of them are sending the same stuff to all the resellers. How many of us have seen Jeffree Star stuff? If you watch live sales, I said I feel like I've seen so many live sellers selling Jeffree Star because the big liquidation companies are selling it to resellers and the live sellers are selling it and a lot of them are selling the same thing and some of those people with bigger followings are making more profit than people who don't have as big of a following. So. It's just something to keep in mind, and a lot of resellers are listing Jeffree Star and Poshmark on eBay. I, what's going on with him, by the way? I kind of was like, is he going out of business? Because usually when a beauty brand, he was very popular a couple years ago. I have never been like a huge fan for obvious reasons. <laughs> or maybe you don't know. I, I, whatever, we're not going to go there. But um, he was very popular, like sold out collections, like all the time a couple years ago and I was just like "Ooh, what's going on it's usually not a good sign when a brand starts liquidating stuff in such mass quantities like a lot of the liquidation sites are like emailing me like do you want Jeffree Star do you want Jeffree Star I'm like absolutely not I thought about it for a second because one of my suppliers was gonna offer me a really good deal like pennies on the dollar and his stuff um, I wouldn't say it's like expensive but it's not affordable uh, it's like middle of the road. Um, and so, yeah, I was going to get a great deal, but I was like, no, there's just too many people selling it. So those are the things to keep in mind, you guys. Price, 
quantity do you even really need that much inventory at once do you even like especially if you are new this is a very important question to ask yourself do you even like reselling before you go and buy like a 500 quantity palette 300 quantity even a hundred is a lot when you're new start out with stuff in your home start out at the thrift store this I should be a case a case study for you guys because 2023 if you're new here we have a lot of new people um, my business was like 70% liquidation. Skims, the palettes I would buy here, palettes I would buy online, palettes I would buy from vendors locally. A lot of my business was liquidation and I was moving through. My best month on Poshmark was $26,000 in sales. My best, best month on eBay was $32,000 in sales. I worked myself like crazy. I had a baby, so I was on maternity leave. So I was like, I wanna give full-time reselling a go. I'm gonna go live five days a week. I'm gonna list 40 to 50 items every day. That made me realize if I was ever to become just a full-time reseller, I would hate it. <laughs> and I am so glad that I did that. I'm glad that I had the experience of five days a week doing nothing but reselling. I always say salute to you guys that are full-time, but it really made me hate it, you guys. Real estate emails coming in. I hated it. It was too much. It was too much. The listing, the shipping, going live every single day. Part of the reason I love uh, doing this is because it's very part time and it's still fun. It, it, yeah. So I say that as a case study to say I realize I don't want to be a full time reseller. I don't. I've told you guys this many times. I don't think I ever will be. I very much love doing it part time, and I don't know that I'll go back to so much of my business being liquidation. I'm not going to lie though. All that being said, I love liquidation. As someone who has a full-time job, it is very helpful for me to just get inventory sent to me. I also love wholesaling, which is kind of like a split off of liquidation. Not really, but uh, I've told you guys this. Uh, basically, people thrift for me around the country and they send me the thrifted inventory and I pay them a set fee per item. And it's great because I work full-time, so I don't have time to source. So I will always have part of that as my business, a mix of liquidation, a mix of wholesaling, but I just don't think that I will ever be 100% just like getting truckloads and pallets every day. I've always told you guys, reselling for me, the goal is not to have a warehouse and get truckloads of deliveries. Um, that's kind of why I scaled back on Amazon. I've all, I've but I will keep it as part of my business, just not 70% like last year. Like right now I'm down to like 30% of my inventory is liquidation and the other 70% is thrifted. So I just wanted to share those tips with you. I've hopefully you found that helpful, whether you're a new reseller or you've been doing it for a while. I just thought it was really important because I think with the popularity of live selling, a lot of newer resellers are just thinking, I can buy a palette and I could be a successful live seller. And if I'm not, I'll just list it. And then they don't like live selling and they don't like listing. And then they're stuck with hundreds of pieces of inventory. So just a cautionary tale. That's all friends. I like for me, for example, I told you I bought that Revolve palette for almost five grand. I did not start making my money back until like a year or two ago. Let that sink in. I didn't make my $4,700 back for three plus years, you guys. And you know what I found? I found basically what I just told you. A lot of the stuff they had sent me had also gone out to other people. Here's another thing about liquidation. A lot of times the new attack stuff you're getting, you guys, is stuff that didn't sell in the store. So think about it. If it didn't sell in the store, why is it going to sell great for you? So a lot of the stuff, like for example, when I first started getting my Skims palettes locally here in LA, I picked them up. A lot of the stuff he was selling me was like extra, extra small and 4X. That was like the bulk of what he had. So I went and looked online and there were hundreds of pieces of 4X and extra, extra small because those didn't sell a lot in the stores. So think about that. If it's not going to sell in the stores, they're pulling it off the shelves, they're liquidating it, Nordstrom, Skims, Bloomingdale's, and, you know, they're selling it to this middleman who then marks it up a little bit, sells it to us, 
And then it just sits because you got like 50 million extra extra smalls and 20 million 4Xs that may take an eternity to sell. And then on top of that, there's like a hundred other sellers that have that one bodysuit in 4X that you also have listed. I know I'm making liquidation. I'm, it sounds like I'm like poo-pooing on liquidation. I am not. I just want you guys to be careful because when I read that story, I'm not going to share who it is, but when I read that story from my follower that was like, I wish I would have listened to you. Would you please buy all of these revolve pieces for me? I'll sell it to you for like pennies on the dollar. You should really make a video. Like she was like, you've said this many times and I kind of brushed over it. Like whatever, whatever, Nikki, like I'm going to buy a palette. Like she was like, please talk about it in detail. So that's just my cautionary tale. Take it from your big sis, Nikki. I'm not an expert, but I have been buying liquidation now for five years, and I've learned a lot, okay? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I could get a lot of flack for this. With all that being said, I'm going to go live. <laughs> so the day you're watching this video, I'm trying to get better about promoting myself. I'm not the biggest live seller, you guys. I've been doing it for almost two years. I'm kind of good at it, kind of not. I've built a very small following. Some of you come to the live sales and I so appreciate it, but I do not promote myself. Um, we're not going to talk about this long, but for those of you that are aspiring live sellers or you are a live seller, you really do have to promote yourself. I've been going live on Poshmark consistently this year, every week, but I never promote myself. I have like almost 6,000 followers on Instagram. I never tell them. I never tell you guys. So I'm going to start promoting myself. Um, come hang out. I've got a lot of stuff. I'm also trying boutique clothing. We have a lot of, um, boutiques here in Los Angeles. So I went and sourced, like hand sourced new with tags inventory. So I'm trying something out. I'm also doing um, like mystery grab bags where I just start this at like 10 bucks and uh, there's 10 items in here. None of it's clothing. It's like um, beauty products, hair products, home good stuff. And I actually got this idea from Britain. I love her live shows. She's so professional. Also a mom. I think our kids are literally the same age. I love her live shows. She has a lot of inventory and she sticks to her schedule. I admire so many live sellers like that, but I will link her Poshmark down below. But I got this idea from her and I was like, that's such a good idea. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of those. I'm just trying out different things to promote myself and stay consistent. I'm trying to find like what times work best for me. And when I tell you guys I'm not the biggest live seller, I usually have like 20 to 50 people in my live show, like on a good day. I very rarely go over 50. So that would be nice. I gotta promote myself more because a lot of my friends that do live selling, they're like, you have a YouTube channel, you have an Instagram, and you literally never talk about your live sales. <laughs> so come and hang out. I will start linking all the live shows down below. Right now my schedule is every Thursday and then I'm also adding Saturday mornings because I'm a morning person. If you've been watching the last couple of videos, you see I get up between 4 and 5 a.m. almost six days a week, you guys. So I thought Saturday mornings would be a good day to go live. The last Saturday I went live um, was really a successful live sell, but I'm not, I'm not going to do, I don't think, dedicated videos on live selling anymore because the vast majority of you are like, shut the F up about live selling, but I know there's a small percentage of you that are interested in live selling. So that's the update. Come to the live sale. The day you're watching this video, the day it's going live, I'm going to have a huge live sale where I'm going to be on for like three or four hours. My bachelorette is next week. If you're watching this when it goes live, we are heading to South Florida. And of course, I am going to be filming and sourcing. So if you have any like honey holes or places that you love to go and you want to share no pressure if you want to you can dm me on instagram or leave it in the comments and i will go and check it out i'm renting a car i'm literally going the day before my bachelorette party to source my friends were like are you serious do you always have to work but like I said, because I don't do reselling full time, I love it, you guys. I've always loved it. I told you, even if I become a multimillionaire, I'm still going to resell. I love it, uh, but I need to do it very part time. And I love sourcing while traveling. So I was like, you guys are insane. Of course I'm going to source. I'm going to film like 50 YouTube videos. So I'm going the day before. I'm going to source thrift stores, consignment stores. I'm hoping I can restrain myself and not buy so much that I need to ship everything back to LA because that 
is going to suck. I might take some thread up and real real labels. My friends are going to be so pissed. There's like eight of them coming and they're going to be like, um, can we pause this dinner? I need to go to UPS and ship this to the real real thing like this nut. What is wrong with her? But I'm going to take some um, real real labels, thread up labels, and then hopefully anything I really want to take home, I can just put in my luggage. Maybe I'll have to buy an extra luggage and then put stuff in there because that's honestly cheaper than shipping from Miami to Los Angeles. Um, if you just buy an extra luggage, I think I have not, I'm just rambling at this point. I haven't flown JetBlue in like 15 years, so I don't know how much the second luggage is there. I, I fly Delta mostly and Delta, I think, I think because I'm some kind of member, I get the, I get two luggages free. I don't know why. I think it's like a partnership with my business Amex or something. So JetBlue, I'll have to look it up, but it might actually be cheaper to just take two luggages there and back. Or maybe I could thrift one. You got to think thrifty here. Fly to Miami with one luggage with my stuff. Thrift a luggage there so I don't have to pay for one going there for like maybe 15 bucks and then bring that back and hopefully JetBlue will only charge me 50 bucks for the second luggage. My friends are going to kill me. Anyways, that's the plan. So <laughs> if you know of any great places in like the Fort Lauderdale, Miami area, let me know. I will go there. I will source consignment stores, thrift stores. I'm so excited. I have not been to Miami in so long. So this video is probably 59 million years long, but you guys said you love the longer videos, so I'm going to keep them coming. There will still be videos next week while I'm in Miami. I'll probably, I won't post a video while I'm there, but as soon as I get back, you're going to have a lot of Florida videos, probably like three, maybe five. Also a lot of short form content. I'm still doing that daily. Make sure to follow the reselling Instagram. Come to the live show and hang out. I keep saying that 2024 is the year that I revive my whatnot career. And I've probably done about five shows there in the last four months. So from January to April, you guys. And the thing is, it's just so hard to revive your reselling like career when you've stopped for so long. So like the last live show I did on whatnot, I think I had 10 people and I made one sale and it's really discouraging. But the thing about like live selling is you just have to keep going. And I really like selling on whatnot. I like that they have giveaways built in. I like the shipping. I like that you can do coupon codes. Um, I like that they have moderators in the chat, like all the things that I wish Poshmark would hurry up and do. And I'm sure they'll get to it. They're just much bigger, but whatnot already has it. It's just building up that following there is going to be really hard for me. And I'm realizing <laughs> as many of you moms and women know, I feel like I'm superwoman, but I can't do it all, right? I can't have a full-time job. I'm very involved as a mother with my kids. They're very young, three, 10 months old, be a fiance, do real estate, do YouTube, do Instagram, be a reseller, go live. Like I'm realizing something has to give. Every child we add to our family, I'm like, okay, something has to give so that I can spend time with my kids. You know what I mean? So, and something will give mom is priority momhood i got like a not a hate comment but i got a i always say you guys are really lovely but i got a comment basically saying like well you're so, you're promoting hustle culture and like like when do you have time to be a mom or something like mom oh being a mom should be first that's much better than real estate and i wanted to be like obviously biatch <laughs> i didn't think i had to say that to you i know that like if you follow me on Instagram, you know how you, I mean, I don't show you guys everything about my children, but I'm like, you see a lot of my, you guys see on Instagram a lot more of my personal life. And I think you guys that know me know that being a mom is first for me personally. So I was like, duh, I'm just telling you the things that I like to do outside of motherhood. So anyways, yeah, I'd love to get back to whatnot. I don't know if you have any thoughts or tips or I don't know for any of you that are life sellers that like you know you're really good at staying structured at a schedule and professional if you want to share any tips with us down below leave them in the comments surely none of you are here still I feel like maybe five of you are still watching this video has got to be like 20 minutes I used to put like a code word like if you made it to the end type in the comments the code word Miami 
if you've made it to this point, just type Miami. I mean, put other comments too about anything I've talked about, but put Miami in your comment. That way I know you're an old deep but a goldie. I'm going to go. This video is an hour. Love you guys, and I'll see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Ciao.